In Module 6 of New Testament Survey, we are continuing with our study of the Pauline epistles in the New Testament, both those letters that we know were written by Paul and also that letters that claim to have been written by Paul. A key theme of this module's reading, particularly with regards to the letter of Galatians and the letter of Ephesians, is the idea of salvation by faith. And so what I'd like to do in this lecture is go a little deeper into why this idea of salvation by faith, or justification by faith, as it's sometimes called, is so important to Paul, and just what he meant by that phrase. We learned in our study from Romans last week that Paul is obsessed with the question of how we are justified. For Paul, we are justified or set in right relationship to God by the righteousness or justice of God that is enacted in the faith of Jesus Christ. The right relationship with God is the new creation in Christ, as we saw in the lecture from last week's module. And in this idea comes the idea that even our own righteousness occurs not by obedience to the law, but by faith alone. We are set in right relation to God by the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, which we share in or participate in through our own faith in Jesus Christ. Now, Paul says that the reason he is writing his letter to the church at Galatia is because they have been led astray as a church by false teachers who had come into Galatia proclaiming a false gospel. Essentially, what these teachers were proclaiming were that we were saved not simply by faith in God, but what by way of obedience to or strict faithfulness to the Jewish law. These teachers were insisting that non-Jewish converts to the way of Jesus Christ must follow the customs of the Jewish law in order to prove their faith and to fully participate in the church. So they were requiring non-Jewish converts to adhere to the Jewish custom of circumcision, for example. Or they were requiring non-Jewish converts to adhere to a strict adherence of the holiness or purity laws that we find in the moral or dietary codes of the Jewish Torah. And they were saying that those who were not willing or those who were not able to adhere to these laws were somehow not able fully to participate in the life of the church that is known as the body of Christ. In short, the Galatian teachers were saying that the Galatians should live their lives as if obedience to the law is what justified them or what set them in right relationship with God. And to live in obedience to the law as if that was what set us in right relationship to God, Paul says, is essentially to claim control over your own life, to claim control over your own destiny, and to do so not fully to trust in God. Now, the important point for Paul is that the law still belongs to what he calls the elemental principles of the world. That is to say, to live according to the law, law is to live according to the old world that is passing away, and not to live according to the new creation that has begun in Jesus Christ. And so Paul insists in Galatians chapter 2 that, quote, a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through the faith of Jesus Christ. And he emphasizes just a few verses further that if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. He goes on to emphasize that whereas the law binds us to the world and divides us according to our worldly identities, Faith frees us to love one another in Christ. And so in Galatians 3, Paul famously says that because we are children of God through faith, there is, quote, no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ 
Jesus. Now, this is a struggle that many of the Pauline letters deal with in depth. And one of the themes that these letters keep coming back to over and over again is that there is nothing we could do to earn our salvation. Not even faith is something that we do. Not even faith is something that we accomplish. And so the letter to Ephesians, we see the author emphasizing the fact that we must be careful to not turn faith itself into a work. In fact, to do this leads to really bad judgments in the church, such as the idea that those who demonstrate a greater obedience to the law are demonstrating a stronger faith, or those who are going through struggles like sickness or poverty or suffering of another kind are somehow weaker in their faith. Those of us who have grown up in the church or even those who have just seen the way in which Christianity has unfolded in our contemporary world, have heard something like this at some point, right? I mean, the idea that if you had just more faith, then you would not be struggling with the sin that you are struggling with. If you just had summoned up more belief, then you would be blessed and not be struggling with the sickness or the suffering that you are undergoing at that time. Right? We've turned faith itself into a work, something that we possess. And so to combat this idea, Paul introduces the concept of grace. And it is this idea of grace that the author of Ephesians emphasizes more than anything else. To have faith in Jesus Christ is entirely to trust God's grace. Even faith itself is a gift that comes from God. Hear that again. Even faith itself is a gift of God's grace. And so in Ephesians 2, we see the language of salvation by faith developed to emphasize this gift. The author says, quote, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Now, this grace indeed sets us free, but freedom means two things in the Pauline letters. One, it means we are set free from the law. The structures of the old world no longer bind us, but it also means that we are set free for loving one another. This is what genuine freedom is, according to Paul. We are free for the sake of freely loving one another. If we live by faith, and faith is a gift of God's grace, then our lives themselves are a gift that are to be given away in love for one another. And so salvation by faith doesn't do away with works. Paul wants to emphasize that, but rather it binds us together in the work of loving one another, a love that is itself a gift of God's grace. In short, salvation by faith is salvation by faith working through love by grace. Get that. Salvation is faith working by love Faith working through love by grace. One more time. Salvation is faith working through love by grace. Now, there's one more point I want to return to in closing, and it has to do with the way in which Paul's teaching on salvation by faith is a matter of justice. In fact, the Greek word for justification is actually the same word for the same Greek word that is used to translate justice. So justification means justice, just as the word faith in Greek is probably best translated as trust. Remember from last week that salvation is not a privatized individual thing. It has to do with living in right relationship to God and to one another according to the new creation in Christ. The biggest problem with teaching that the law saves us 
is that it creates divisions and sets up unjust relationships within the church that include discrimination based on wealth, ethnicity, and gender. This is the problem with the law and its commands. The law cannot save us because the law cannot bring true justice. Instead, it breeds distrust of one another based on false hierarchies in the church. Instead, the cross of Jesus Christ, Paul tells us, shows us the face of God's justice, a justice based not on the law, but on grace, which binds us together in a way of living whereby we trust one another in love. Remember that. Salvation is faith working through love by grace. And so we could conclude that salvation by faith is embodied as justice through trust. And Paul's letters are filled with teachings on how to live out this justice in love for one another. It is up to us now to figure out what it means to live out that justice today in light of our reading of those same things in the letters of Paul.